Looking back the year, the new year then, 2017, began without the president in the office here in Korea. And it was only May when this new Moon government came into office. Since then, this means it's been only seven months. But however, what have been the achievement and some of the shortfalls? That's what we want to talk about right here in this program, up front. Impeachment and the launch of a new administration were the most talked about issues in 2017. When asked to name the country's top issues for this year, roughly 50% of respondents said the impeachment of the former president followed by 17% who answered the launch of the Moon Jae-in administration. President Moon Jae-in took office in May, promising to build a proud Korea. His job approval rating has remained strong in the 70s after peaking at 84% in June, the highest an incoming president had ever received. The strong public support gave Moon the momentum he needed to deliver on his campaign pledge to wipe out deep-rooted evil corruption in society. He introduced a petitioning system on the presidential office's website to better communicate with the people. All in the meanwhile, promoting policies that focus on job creation and income-led growth. On the diplomatic front, President Moon has held a number of bilateral meetings with his counterparts in an attempt to fill the leadership vacuum created by the ousting of his predecessor. However, there has been criticism of his handling of North Korea, including how he dealt with North Korea's continued provocations. When Pyongyang carried out its six nuclear test and missile launches in September, Moon's approval rating sank to the 60s, the lowest level since his inauguration. In addition, despite his pledge to become the jobs president, a youth unemployment rate hit a record high in 18 years, and the government's measures to stabilize the nation's housing market failed to lower housing prices. The people expect the government to start delivering on more tangible results starting next year. Earlier this month, the government's budget for next year was approved at 394 billion U.S. dollars. While welfare and job creation were allocated the largest portion of the budget, the budget for social overhead capital projects was slashed significantly. The proposed budget reflects the Moon administration's commitment to creating jobs and improving the livelihood of the people. On this week's Upfront, we assess the Moon administration's performance in 2017 and discuss the outlook for 2018. For today's discussion, we have Professor Ernst Lee from the Graduate School of Technology and Innovation Management at Hanyang University joining us. Professor Cho jong Un also is joining us. He's a professor from the Graduate School of International Studies at Aju University. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. This is a very interesting discussion, even though it's uh, something that happens all the time at the end of the year, looking back the year and looking back the achievement and some of the shortcomings of the current administration in Korea, the government works. Uh, we will, first of all, professors, uh, list up uh, we will discuss further on these issues, but uh, in your minds, some of the most important achievements and some of the shortcomings, starting with Professor Joe. Thank you very much. I think the biggest achievement of the new administration mm -hmm. since its uh, inception last seven months ago, right. it's a short time, mm -hmm. is, is normalizing the lives of Koreans. Um, we all remember the candlelight protest right. uh, that has occupied our everyday life uh, for last uh, almost uh, six, seven months. I think that has ended without any major disruptions or violence and uh, smooth and peaceful and legit uh, transition to mm -hmm. a new administration mm -hmm. was a big achievement. And I think since then the, the Moon administration is trying to react mm -hmm. to the outcries or, 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 or outpourings mm -hmm. of criticisms of the previous administrations. So I think this previous administration has been receiving a, a passing grade, if not successful grade, in terms of reacting to those uh, issues that previous administration has raised or has been criticized for. Okay. Rather. I think this is not a perfect time for uh, any government to deploy 
full span of the policy, uh, given the fact that the global economy is still struggling. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the reason why President Moon is enjoying over near to 70 percent of right. the popularity ratio is that, the first of all, I think he has changed the system of communication mm -hmm. with people, mm -hmm. open communication. Well, even the situation is not you know, easy, but he has opened communication with the people to accommodate various mm -hmm. opinions mm -hmm. and uh, various voices. That really uh, you know, uh, attracted the people that a president is with people. Mm -hmm. So he is the one who can communicate with the people, made him very uh, in the top range of the popularity, right. near to 70%. Right. I think this is the, the biggest achievement he mm -hmm. has done, different mm -hmm. from all the other uh, presidents. Right, right. Especially for the past two previous conservative presidents who were continuously criticized for their lack of communication with the right. people, right? So this was a big change. Uh, what about some of the shortcomings that you see in your mind? While the previous, the new, this new administration has been very good in reacting to the concerns that has been raised by the, the previous administration or mm -hmm. criticized for, I think this government is yet to show what are the forward-looking strategies uh, this mm -hmm. government has mm -hmm. uh, to manage the rest of the, the, the tenure of the government. Right, right. This has been very busy in terms of reacting, mm -hmm. removing or wiping out the deep root to the evil so-called. Right. But in terms of showing uh, clearly the visions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how uh, they will lead this country to the next level, mm -hmm people still uh, not clear right, right. what are the specific visions this government is projecting. Uh, what about you, Professor Lee? In your view, some of the shortcomings? Same well, ideas? Uh, from my standpoint, I'd like to pinpoint mm -hmm. some contradictory policies in, from economic front, I see. economic policy front. Mm -hmm. Well, his, uh, Moon's policy is to give more wealth, social welfare to the people, right. while mm -hmm. he has not clearly uh, indicated how he can achieve it. Mm. But on the other hand, he has you know, raised right. uh, the corporate tax from 22 percent, 25 percent, which mm -hmm. is pretty much in a reverse way to other countries. Take an example, UK, 17 percent. And recently... United States? Yeah. The uh, United States mm -hmm. has downed corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 21 percent. Right, right. So global OECD countries are downing corporate tax, mm -hmm. but we are raising corporate tax, right. which is you know, causes a lot of, you know, potential problems, but okay. he has not yet, or his cabinet members has not yet demonstrated how they can tackle these issues mm -hmm. that people are concerned about. Let's, for, for now, let's ask the people on the street about how they feel about the performance of the president so far, and we have asked individual uh, persons on the street how they would actually rate uh, Moon government's performance so far. Let's take a look. Uh,올해 85점정도를주고 89점을 그런 부분들을 좀 빨리 개선을 해 갖고 더 이상 큰 사고가 일어나지 않았으면 좋겠습니다. 80점이요. 이유는 제가 지금 현재 대학생인데 이제 청년 실업도 문제지만 이제 대학생을 위한 제도나 이런 것도 약간의 변화는 있을 거라고 기대를 했는데 생각보다 바뀌는 게 아직은 없어서 조금 아쉬운 것 같아요. 
Of course, Koreans always won 100, <laughs> score 100 in any kind of exams or whatever. We could ask different questions here. Some people say this is very high score, but others will say, why not 100? Why not the perfect score? I'd like to give more score, more than the 90, 90 uh, to his uh, opening communication style. But I, ha I have to separate this, his communication style with the people and the corporate sector. Okay. Well, I think he has done a great job with opening communication with the people of this mm -hmm. Korea or citizens right. of Korea right. to accommodating various opinions. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, mm -hmm. I don't think he has been very successful or not yet done enough job with the corporates. Well, there is no public policy. You know, securing minimum rate, minimum wage, the high level mm -hmm. by 2020, mm -hmm. 10,000 won, mm -hmm. which everyone supports. That's right, fine. Right. But subject who can execute is corporate. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to enhance mm -hmm. the communication with the corporate, how they can achieve it, not in a one day, right. but in a sequence of time mm -hmm. flame, fully accommodating corporate conditions and economic conditions. Well, given the time to five or four years, but we have to clearly show mm -hmm. when we can achieve it, mm -hmm. how we can achieve it, rather right. than just the pushing the corporate sector, right, right. well, this is the policy you have to obey or mm -hmm. follow it. Mm -hmm. So there are unspoken voices or latent voices, a lot of complaints from corporate sector, but at this stage, maybe the voice is not rising. However, while the in practices, you know, the high unemployment mm -hmm. ratio of the mm -hmm. juvenile, right. young people, mm -hmm. almost 9.2% is partially attribute this kind of reaction of corporates to the Moon Jae-in right. government, I think. The voice is still unspoken, could actually affect big time the, the future approval ratings down the road. I think that's what you're implying here. Right. Professor Jo Jong-un, uh, some of the people that we have interviewed mm -hmm. talked about diplomacy, international relations. Uh, what do you think as a specialist on this specific uh, subject area, what has been your observation? Well, I think last seven months, um, mm -hmm. this government has been very much occupied with diplomacy rather than um, domestic issues and mm -hmm. economic issues mm -hmm. that Professor Lee has mentioned. And uh, that's because of North Korean nuclear issues. North Korean nuclear issues. Right. And there has been so many issues that this diplomatic issues this administration has mm -hmm. inherited. Right. Parking first, uh, the high successful success rate or supporting rate as, as a compliment, mm -hmm. if one add a little bit more, um, I think there has been some good aspects, especially dealing with uh, the Trump administration. Right. The state visit, mm -hmm. uh, the vice versa, right. has been generally considered as a success. I right. think uh, playing the uh, puzzles mm -hmm. uh, between the ocean power, so-called US and Japan, mm -hmm. and the continental power, China and Russia, Russia, I think it was a tough game. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there could have been something that this administration could have done or should have done better. Mm -hmm. But uh, giving them uh, some, some benefit of doubt, I think it's as if playing a, playing a football mm -hmm. with Brazil mm -hmm. or Germany mm -hmm. in a home field. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to win that game because it's home field. But the reality is, is playing against Germany, playing against Brazil. So uh, there are not many strategies or weapons they can deploy at the moment because our, our situation has been very weak. However, one thing that that could have been better mm -hmm. is, is to prepare a clear destination, but very flexible in terms of how to get there. Right. Uh, what I feel is this government has a very strong will to re-engage with North Korea, right. which is good. Mm -hmm. I support it in principle. But how to get there, they seem to have only one direction to yeah. achieve. In this con complex diplomacy situation, I think you need to be a lot more flexible. We need many cards, right? We need many cards mm -hmm. and you need to have a, have a flexibility to deal with different pushes and right. different pull. Mm -hmm. And this government seems to be somehow rigid mm -hmm. in dealing with those unexpected situations right. like the Chinese reaction right. on THA deployment. Right, right exactly. Um, so I felt this government needs to bring a bit more flexibility mm -hmm. and widen the perspective mm -hmm. of its diplomatic uh, issues. Professor Lee, your reaction to China and North Korea issues? Well, I think, you know, the major policy dilemma for Korea is to separate you know, political issues with economic issues. But from my standpoint, mm -hmm. in my observation, I think we have to have a plan. We have to play with the many cards, as you mentioned. But one of the cards we can play with is economic you know, issues with the political issues bundled together. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you know, 
U.S. and China, they are always arguing each other, but they are coordinating each other because right. of the economic ties. Right. We have to fully leverage out this point. Mm -hmm. And Korea is exporting a lot of goods to China, mm -hmm. but you know, about 70% of goods we are exporting to China is intermediate goods. Right. We have the cost. And we also have very strong ally, economic ally, and you know, likewise United States and mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. not political. You know, there are we sometimes have different opinions, but we have underlining very strong economic ties. Mm -hmm. That China have to accept these economic ties right. and they have to live with. So we have, on that know, point, however, I have a question. There yeah. has been observation that actually in retaliating against thought issues, China could not actually touch important part of the economic relationship with South Korea. They're what they did on the uh, tourism front and in some of the uh, cultural field, the actual impact has been limited, some people argue. What is your observation on that? Well, I think in the economic uh, reaction, that, or a political reaction we have shown to the China, mm -hmm. was yet you know, not fully uh, leverage our, leveraging out our core strengths that we have with right. other strong allies, economic allies. Mm -hmm. Take an example, well, banning the tourism is a small part of the economic issue. But moreover, mm -hmm. in a global issue that China, the biggest export destination is United States and EU. Right. But we have a very strong tie with the United States. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, rather than touching upon some uh, tourism issues, I think we, our government has fully coordinated with the U.S. Mm -hmm. in counterattacking this issue, political issue, with the economic issue mm -hmm. in joint partnership or joint operation with mm -hmm. the United States with more trade issues to China rather than touching upon some, you know, in our mm. tourism issues. Mm -hmm. This government is determined to, uh, from the beginning, determined to play the role of being in a, a driver's seat in managing the, the international relations around the region and North Korean issues and so on. Uh, I think what this administration wants to do is to make sure that we determine our own destiny mm -hmm. because it's our land mm -hmm. and especially the issues with North Korea, right. issues with Thad and others. I think that principles are respectful, and, and I, I support that. But again, how to get there? Right. It's not always necessary to be on a driver's seat right, right. to drive the vehicle. Right. Sometimes you can let others drive, mm -hmm. while as long as the driver goes to your destination, exactly, exactly. you should be fine. Right. So yeah. driver is saying that the destination we want to reach is peace, <laughs> but driver not yet has a clear roadmap in terms of how we're going to get to it. So. Unless we have that roadmap prepared, driver should not be driving the car too fast. Exactly. Perhaps maybe one could say, the critics could say on that. Uh, economic front, uh, jobs, 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 right. especially the youth unemployment. They say this youth unemployment rate, current rate is highest since 1999. That tells us a lot. So what is your take on that jobs, jobs, jobs issue? Well, I think, you know, uh, as you said, current unemployment ratio between age 15 to 29, mm -hmm. so we call young generation, Youth, right. stands at 9.2%, which mm -hmm. is the historic high you know, record. Since 1999. Right. right. Mm -hmm. The main reason, I think, is, first of all, consistency in policy. Because the- Lack policy, of consistency? You yeah, mean? lack of mm -hmm. consistency. Um, any policy cannot survive more than one or two years. Take an example, the Changzhou Gyeongja, so, create, so we call mm -hmm. creative economy, economy, has right. been there about a year ago, but mm -hmm. it's all gone. Mm -hmm. So all this, you know, changeable policy causes confusion. Mm -hmm. And second, the practical support. Well, the well, government says it's critical role to stimulate and, and support uh, entrepreneurship right. by youngsters to start a business. Right. But in reality, 90, more than 90% of support is by supporting loans. Mm -hmm. Loan means you have to pay it back. But in a, again, the government says we can accept the failure. Mm -hmm. But in the United States, most of the support is by, is by investment right. and those people. And also in the United States or other countries, there are different level of array of investors, okay. startup level investors and major investors and mature level investors. We, mm -hmm. we don't have such kind of system here. So I think we have to structure mm -hmm. and stimulate and and, uh, and support the, all these financial institutions, mm -hmm. they can be aggressively involved mm -hmm. in this stimulation of youngsters' job creation mm -hmm. rather than government-led policy only. Okay, okay. And also, mm -hmm. you know, the other point I'd like to pinpoint is it's actually consent. Consent means we have to accept the reality here, mm -hmm. the difficulties, while we are support, 
providing more welfare, we have right. to generate more you know, capital. Mm -hmm. How we can do that? Right, right. But in the existing uh, manufacturing system, likewise, you know, if you have a, a 100 square meter factory, mm -hmm. 1,000 square meter factory right. with a 10 machines, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to generate 10% new employment. Mm -hmm. If you have to uh, increase 10% new, new, new employment, mm -hmm. it means at the top level, revenue level, right. you have to maybe grow 50%. There's no such a in a business that you can grow revenue by 50%. Okay. So new business should be there, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in accommodating new businesses, mm -hmm. likewise FinTech, mm -hmm. right, government has been saying, right. but we haven't seen any benchmarking FinTech technologies that we can be proud of to other countries. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So there have always has been lingering issues mm -hmm. and a lot of discussions, but mm -hmm. there has not been dedicated support mm -hmm. or benchmarking model that we have been right. generating over seven months. Okay. Uh, that's the problem, I think. I think, in a way, if we can come up with an excuse for that is, this government came in unexpectedly in May, mm -hmm. and it's been seven months. So if it had been a uh, regularly scheduled transition, a uh, longer campaign period where they could have developed better ideas, more details, and then maybe uh, you know, we could talk about the performance of it after one year. So everything has been kind of truncated in mm -hmm. a way. So uh, again, same point about lack of ideas, the relative lack of ideas. But as we look back, Lee myung administration, green growth, uh, Park Geun-hye administration, uh, creative economy, and this one, we believe it's uh, income-driven growth together with uh, job creation. Innovation. Innovation. <laughs> so this, this is a little bit mixed in many ways. Right. Your reaction to this combination, big uh, salad ball approach, uh, what do you see here? Or do you see clear theme here in trying to help the government developing further clear ideas? I see themes, but there are too many. Mm. Uh, in that salad bowl, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, going back to these job issues, uh, I mean, while I support and agree with Professor Lee's point, the way I characterize it, our economy is suffering from classical case of misfit. Okay. Uh, in many senses. Misfit in between what the global economy is asking mm -hmm. and what our industrial capacity right. and the level skill can offer. Right. Misfit between the corporate demand and the people's uh, expectation of minimum wages. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many layers of misfit mm -hmm. that um, has to be addressed mm -hmm. holistically. Mm -hmm. I don't think one policy to resolve one specific issue mm -hmm. can transform our economy right. into something like US or Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and my concern mm -hmm. is that this government seems to be somehow impatient um, to demonstrate and to result produce a result, in a for hurry, example, right. in a hurry. For right. example, I'm, I'm a bit um, skeptical. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly speaking, I'm quite concerned mm -hmm. about the way they want to create job in public sector. Okay. Uh, international experience, mm -hmm. uh, especially after the, the collapse of Soviet Union, right. uh, Eastern Germany um, and many Eastern European countries, right. one after another introduced public sector jobs. Mm -hmm. But after economy took off, mm -hmm. it has been extremely difficult mm -hmm. to downsize their public sector. Right. It has been permanent burden mm -hmm. uh, for the public sector and the economy as a whole. Right. It's not just point. my personal emotional thing, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the international experience right. we should have learned. Mm -hmm. So adding this many jobs into mm -hmm. public sector will produce results next year okay. or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the, the kind of lasting impact or economy um, is somehow right. very burdensome. Right, right. So I think it's, it's time to tell the truth to the people mm -hmm. that this economy is in serious misfit situation. Mm -hmm. Not single solution will resolve mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. We need to put all our um, solutions together mm -hmm. and digest them. Right. And it will take some time to get better. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, maybe, I hope not, but it will not be over within this administration's four-year period. Mm -hmm. But that honesty and that uh, sense of realism mm -hmm. is difficult to mention right. as a political administration. Right. But unless we do that, I don't think we are just doing patchy work, mm -hmm. solving problem here, solving problem there, but there's a crack in the dam. Right, right. So when the new administration came in after four and a half years, mm -hmm. I think the situation, I am afraid, cannot be better than today. I think your points have been made very, very clear. The administration came in only seven months ago, and there have been 
relative lack of ideas because of the lack of time, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So that's the key reason why we are looking very much forward to next year's performance and then sharing up the ideas with the people about what's important for the country. So I think all the points have been <laughs> made very, very clear. For that reason, I want to thank you both big time. Thank you very much for our discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we want to thank our viewers for having joined us. And uh, one thing that we want to tell you is this is the very last episode of this program. And we want to thank you big time for the, for the interest and support that you have shown us for the last about four years of this program. And even though the program is ending today, right here, Arirang TV will continue to come to you with interesting programs and informative shows as well. So stay with us at Arirang TV next year, 2018 and beyond. And with that word of promise and asking you the favor to stay with us, this has been Kim Yeonju. Thank you very much.